Okay, welcome back. This is the Procom Geek and this is part 4 of Procom Tutorials for Beginners in English. Part 4, yes ladies and gentlemen. And in today's video, we're going to be getting started with the analysis design modules for Procom. Oh, please, please, let me just say the analysis modules. So, we don't want to waste too much time. Let's just get right into the video. Okay. So like I said in the introduction, today we need to look at the analysis modules because we looked at how to download, how to install, and we looked at the basics of setting the user preferences, and we talked about all the modules, the analysis and design suite modules that you have in Proco. And today's video, we need to get started with looking at each individual module, and to particular for this video, we're going to be looking at the single span analysis module that is for beam now some of you may be thinking why aren't we starting with sumo frame and plane stress well the basics remember this is for basics and you probably are a beginner if you're not a beginner i have tutorials on sumo frame if you want you can check those out but this is for beginner and i am assuming you don't even know how to use pro code and so just as any beginner has to do you have to start with the basics now, remember, even when you were in college, you didn't start with designing an entire building. You start with designing simple elements. And the first element that you are taught how to design or how to analyze when you are doing structural engineering or even civil engineering in general is the beam. You analyze a beam and you don't even analyze a 300 and 400 deep beam. You analyze a stick of a beam. So we're going to be using those same principles that help you grasp the very essence of structural analysis to for you to grasp the very essence of Procone, right? We're going to be starting off with the basics. So to start off with the basics, we need to start with the most basic module that you need to understand. And this one will also build the foundation for you to understand what Procone means when it's requesting information, what you feed into it. And you actually notice that if you understand this module, you'll be able to understand the rest of the modules that are going to come. So without wasting too much time, let's just click on it and have it load up and we will go into the analysis of a single span beam. So normally it takes a lot of time for it to load up. So I just fast forward to the part where we have it loaded up. And remember beam.exe is running in demo mode, but you don't have to worry because we are going to be showing you the basics of everything. The only difference when this one, the beauty of this one rather, is even though it's in demo, you can use virtually everything. You don't even have to worry about, except you cannot transmute or transfer your results to the other Procon modules, right? But in demo mode, everything is available for you. So we're just going to click OK. Then the first thing, this is the interface that you get when you open the single span beam analysis module, right? So the first thing that greets you, you have your input tab. Now, the first button that you have is you can select a set, select a section, right? In this case, well, when you start analyzing beams in level one, level two, you analyze stick beams. But in this case, this program is used to analyze actual beams that you have in real life. So obviously your beam will have a section. So the first thing that you would want to do is go to section selection, right? And in under this tab, you see it offers you a section or it allows you to select a section from the section database, which we saw in video three previously. So under this one, you have steel, concrete or timber. And in our case, you can even choose for steel. As you can see, the different sections. This is an I section, universal beam, right? So many, the different, as you can see, they change depending on what section you have. You can even choose hollow sections square hollow sections, circular hollow sections, rectangular hollow sections, and even what they call lip sections, right? This is normally used for your pellets. Okay, now in for this one or for this video, we're going to go with concrete and we're just going to choose, let's say a 220 by 220 section, right? Now, once you select a 220 by 220 reinforced concrete section, what you will see is that there is the section designation. This is what tells you what section you're going to be analyzing for in this case. Now, this is where all your errors will come up. In this case, it's telling you you don't have any length entered for your beam. Okay. And in case if you want, this is a program 3.0. 
you can actually have a simply supported example which you can try and figure out what it is doing but then this is why I have this tutorials for you so that you understand how to use the software instead of you having to try and figure out by clicking the simply supported example or the cantilever example but it's available for you if you want to do it but if you still want you can still keep with these videos they will be helpful for you no matter what okay now having talked about the examples we now need to look at the beam data so what does it say what is the first thing so the first thing that it tells you to enter is the length which is given in meters now the good thing about Procon is where all the single span beam analysis module is that it gives you a pictorial or graphical representation or graphical illustration of what it will be asking you. So in this case, length is equal to the overall length of your beam. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to key in five because I'm thinking of a five meter beam. And in this case, if you go to the right of your screen, there is another user interface or should I say a graphical user interface that shows you that gives you the output or starts drawing the beams or gives you a way to take note or to keep track of whatever you're entering so that you understand what you're doing. In this case, we have entered five meters and there on the screen, it shows you it has a beam that is simply supported for now, which is an I of 182 and E is equal to 206 kilopascals. Okay. Now, the next thing you want to do is to define the end conditions. Defining the end conditions is easy. In this case, as you can see, you can choose whether you want it to be fixed, pinned, or free, right? If you say fixed, this is how it will look like. If you say pinned, you have the normal support. And if you say it's free, it will be basically producing a cantilever beam for you. But what we're going to do is we're going to try and recreate the situation that we have to the left of the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix the left support, then the fixity at the right, we're going to make sure that it is pinned so that it looks almost similar to what we have on the screen to the left is what we have on the right. Now, the next thing is I, this one is automatically calculated given the section that you have entered. This is calculated for you so you don't have to worry about it. Then the last thing that you have, this is E, which is the modulus, right? Young's modulus. So by default, you can change this to whatever you want. And there's a table that shows you the general range of the Young's modulus for different types of materials. But by default, it gives you two. You have 206 and 25. So 206, this one would be if you're using structural steel. But 25 is the normal range if you're using reinforced concrete. So we're going to go with 25. Right now, once you've done this, you've entered the beam data. The section designation has been done. Now we have also have the fixed beam, which is pinned at the other side. And what we need to do is now we need to take care of the loads and have a situation that is similar to what we have right now. So let's move on to that. So to enter the loads into program, all you have to do is go to this nice table that you have where you can put in the loads. So to do this, what we're going to do in this case, since you see this doesn't start off as zero starts off at a certain value. So I'm just going to say, assume it start off at one, right? Then I'm going to assume it goes up by say three, right? Two, so that is three. Now, as you can see, this is starting where X is equal to zero and going all the way to where it is five. But that is not what we want. We want to mimic something that you have there. So to mimic it, it asks you, once you enter the load for, if it's going to be a uniformly distributed or trapezoidally distributed or triangularly distributed, you can put specify A, this is the distance from the left support that you want your load to start from. In this case, I'm just going to put one, so it will start at one meter away from the fixed support. But at the same time, this doesn't go all the way to the end of the support. So I'm just going to assume it's going to go for a step of one again. So in this case, it's going to say one meter from the support, then the load starts, goes all the way to a value of one, then goes all the way to a value of three, as you can see at the left, no, at the right, rather, for a distance of one meter. Then the next thing that you want to do is input the load. So what we're going to do, a point load, in this case, I'm just going to say it's five kilonewtons, and I want it to be at a distance of four meters away from the left support, right? Now, you also see there's a moment there, and then there's a moment to the right. So remember, a positive moment is anti-clockwise, whilst a negative moment is going to be clockwise. So I'm just going to put a moment of five, right but i'm going to put it at four meters as well and as you can see there we have the moment is there right 
and this all of this it tells us what is the ultimate limit state load factor so in this case i'm going to assume everything there is dead load so we're just going to say 1.4 because we want to design according to the bs design code now if you wanted to put a live load which is going to be 1.6 so you can put 1.6 there this time around we're going to put a moment and we're going to put it at 5 meters so this just means this moment that we see there right is going to be 5 meters there and it's going to be a live load and the ultimate limit state factor will be 1.6 once you've done input in the loads which is as simple as this in the single span beam analysis you have modeled the current situation that you might have on site or in real paper now the next thing that you would want to do once everything is done as you can see the error list doesn't have any errors so you're good to go next thing you can do is just click on output now once you do this it shows you the output for the deflections the shear force and the bending moment that is going to okay in your beam right so even if you're using demo it will calculate it for you and it will give you the actual results that you need now some of you will be asking hopefully you understand already how or the shape of a shear force diagram depending on the loads that you have and the moments that you have right and as for the deflections i think it's quite normal this you see that it's correct at the ends it will definitely need to be zero right and if it's going to be supported at both ends the deflection is almost always deeper towards the middle of your beam so this is it now if your procon was fully activated what you would do now you could click on this and then it will transmit the results that you have right here then take them all the way to the steel where you could now analyze and design your members for either actual stress or both combined and uh, actual and moment but unfortunately we are not able to do that so the only thing that you can do is you can go to your calc sheet right in this case this is your calculation sheet you can also edit the output settings what you wanted to put in this case you wanted to put the data file that you put the input tables and the moment and shear force diagrams that you would want so you could use this to calculate the moments for any beam that you want if you want to zoom in you can always zoom in right this is what you can then produce or take to someone so that they can check your material and if you want you can always edit the header in our case we're just going to load it as default and then we're going to say okay and if you want you can say print now right in this case i'm just going to go properties pages change it from a letter then go to a4 then i want to click okay then click okay and then it's telling me where do you want to print in this case we're going to go to the desktop and we already have a pro code program and in this case we're just going to say simple span beam one and once we're done like this we're just going to click on save and then it's going to pop up whatever your default pdf reader is so as you can see we have simply we have actually just input the data and designed a simply supported beam or single span beam which we now have and you can take this to anyone you want so that they can review if your calculations are going to be correct and there as you can see it it shows them the beam data that you inputted right the section that you put in the loads that you put in and then gives you the moment shear and deflections all right so this is it this is an introduction to the single span analysis module which is available in program and as you can see even in demo it is able to produce the same results that you would even use when you have it under full license or even when you have a student license so this is helpful when you want to just do a single span beam so what you can do is we may look at a few examples maybe from a textbook or even a real life situation where you can use this so this will be just basically for now analyzing the beam right because after you analyze it and you have the moment all you will need to do then is to design design the beam given the maximum moment and in this case the maximum moment the bending moment is being given as if i go there it's being given as 16 which is almost six 16 kilo newtons per meter is what we will design for and the shear in this beam we will design it for a shear of 8.9029 that is what you do so this is it ladies and gentlemen as simple as that you don't even have to worry the reason why that it's very low is because the loads that we used are also very low this is not a very heavily loaded beam so thank you very much for tuning in this has been part four of procon tutorials for beginners in english so if this is your first time please subscribe and if it's not your first time please hit the notifications bell and i'll see you in the next video where we may talk more about the single span beam analysis module or we may choose to move to another module so thank you very much for tuning in hopefully you'll be coming from a beginner to an expert in no time